It's Hop Along Cassidy. With action and suspense, out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hop Along Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The Ring of the Silver Spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West, Hopalong Cassidy. This famous hero thrills his 60 million fans with action and dangerous adventure. In the role of Hopalong Cassidy is the popular star of the motion picture series, William Boyd. And now, another exciting story of the early West. The Red Terror. Right now, Hoppy in California are talking to an old friend they've run into after a long cattle drive to the Gulf shipping town of Fort Texas. He's a tough, gray-haired little man named Blonnie Madigan, a former gold miner who struck it rich and is now living at Fort Texas with his daughter, Laurel. As Blonnie explains... Oh, she's been living in the east with her ma's people, going to school and whatnot. Thanks to you, darling. Living like a, a desert rat all these years, no. <laughs> to quote Mr. Cassidy. Well, those days are gone forever, Miss Madigan. Looks like your dad is a big man in Port Texas. Uh, say, what's this new business you said you was in? This, uh, improvisio? <laughs> no, impresario. California, you wall-eyed ignoramus. Dad's in the show business. Show business? For sure, and I'm rolling out a welcome mat for the pair of you. Up are you in California staying at my place until the time... Now, is... hold on, Blarney. Oh, the bar 20 won't be gone to rack and ruin if you stay over a few more days. I wish you would, please. Well, you see, we're behind schedule already. Please, you've got to stay. Tonight I'm putting on the greatest fight this side of the Mississippi. The star event of Madigan's Roman Arena and Opry House. I got Bombo Rene, the New Orleans bombshell... Fighting the one and only Red Terror. Never heard of it. No. Look. Please, I wish you would. Won't you? You've got to see the Red Terror, Hoppy. Nary a fight as he lost, and all inside of one, two rounds. Oh, shucks, Hoppy, we don't have to rush back. Do stay. It's important. Very well. Good. Thank you. But just for a day or two, and at our hotel. Oh, but I've told you... No argument, Blarney. Thanks just the same. Now i got to find my way back to the hotel and pay off my trail hand. California. You can chew the fat here with Blarney. I'll show you the way. Much obliged. Be back soon. I wanted to talk to you alone. That's what I figured. I, I thought that you of all people might be the one who could help me. What's bothering you? It's Brady Adams. He's going to fight this, this horrible Indian, this red terror in two weeks. You'll be killed, Mr. Cassidy. Killed. Now, hold on. So the Red Terror is an Indian, eh? And Adam? My fiancé. Brady is foreman at the Broken Arrow. I met him when I first came to live with Dad over a year ago. He started to fight shortly after, trying to raise a stake so we can be married. I see. How's he made out? Much better than I feared. But he mustn't fight the Red Terror, Mr. Cassidy. The Indians already killed one man and crippled others. Dad's booked him to fight Brady. I begged him not to. What does he think of Brady Adams' chances? Brady will be killed and Dad knows it. He hates Brady. Well, why? I don't know. I guess he just doesn't think Brady's good enough for me. Dad still thinks I'm a child. Does Brady think he can uh, whip this red terror? Of course. Of course, heaven help him. You can do something to stop it, Mr. Cassidy, can't you? You will, won't you? I don't know, Miss Madigan. But I'll let you know after I see the Red Terror fight Bombo Rene tonight. Now back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, The Red Terror. After driving their cattle to Fort Texas, Hoppy and California accept the invitation of their old friend, Blonnie Madigan, to see a prize fight at Madigan's Roman Arena and Opera House. Since talking privately to Blonnie's lovely daughter, Laurel, Hoppy is especially interested in one of the contestants that night, the Red Terror. We find Hoppy in California in Blonnie's private box, 
Round one of the main bout has just ended. Well, it's always like this the first round, Tommy. Uh, you mean he just stands there making like a doggone turtle while the other hombre tries to find some place to hit him? Now you just wait me by. The betting is far to one if the big Indian knocks Bombo kicking inside of three rounds. And it's five to one I'll give you myself. There's something about the Bombo's trainer there in his corner that seems kind of familiar. You know, Hoppy, I was thinking the same thing. Wait a minute. It's Wendy Sykes. What? Wendy Sykes, the skinny little fellow who ran the traveling medicine show that hit Mescalera last year. Carnation, that's the one. He, he was selling some stuff called Chief Walking Moose Snake Oil. A- and that big engine was part of his show. Yeah, only now the Indian's calling himself the Red Terror. Blarney, that Red Terror of yours used to be a medicine show man. And Windy Sykes was his partner. Faith, and that explains it. Explains what? The reason for Windy hating Dr. Drum, so. And just who is Dr. Drum? He's the Red Terror's manager. Windy's been going around saying that Dr. Drum stole the Indian from him. Sykes has been trying to find a man to bait the Red Terror. Yeah, someone to punch Dr. Drum's meal ticket, so to speak. Who is this Dr. Drum? Where is he? Oh, he is. And there he is, up, Sitting behind the Indian's corner at ringside is the fat man in the Panama hat. California. You recognize him? You bet I do. Ah, big golly, ring the bell, McGonagall. Are you asleep down there? Let's have round two. Well, let's see what happens this round. There's Bombo's opening up. He's let him and have it. Sure, and the terror's catching him out in his arms and his gloves. You see, Bombo can't touch him. Bombo's trying to make the Indian fight. Hey, if the terror's so good, why does he keep kivered up? They're on the ropes. Come on, Bombo. Something's wrong with Bombo. The He's staggering. Must have hit him. Sure, I told you, didn't I? Bombo's down. Yeah. He must have got hit on the ropes, Hoppy. Oh, big God, it's going to be a knockout. Another knockout for the Red Terror. Stick close, California. Don't get lost in this crowd. Dude, we already lost Barney, Hoppy. Hey, the exit's this way. We're not going toward the exit. One side, please. Excuse us, partner. Come on, California. We're going to the ring. Yeah, there's Wendy leaning again the ropes. Bombo's still in his corner out cold. It's like they've called a doctor into the ring. Yeah. Hey, Wendy, you old pill peddler. What's the matter? Can't you wake up that sleeping beauty? What's the matter? Bombo hurt badly? Badly? He's dead. I'll get off the chief's hand wraps, will I? You keep the snoopers out of this dressing room. Si. I fight good. Mm. You follow the instructions perfectly, chief. Always keep covered up until your opponent seems a little buggy. <laughs> Here, I'll pull off that to the glove for you. Hey, get out. Congratulations, Dr. Drum, or should I say Dr. Trotter? You. The cowboy. The cowboy who gives us so much trouble in New York. Yes, Willie. I kind of thought that bandit face of yours looked familiar when I saw you seconding this big moose. Then when I saw you, Doctor, I remembered our little get-together the time I was in New York with that Rodeo. You were in the smuggling business then, as I recall. You and Willie. Chief walking moose hungry. Yes, yes, in a moment, Chief. Just lie there on the rubbing table. Willie will give you a massage. Oh, you know, Cassidy... I've always felt that at some unexpected point in the strange geometry of Providence, our paths must cross again someday. So you changed your name to Drum and beat it, eh? (laughs) You amuse me. Then laugh this off. Bombo Rene is dead. What? Well, that's impossible, eh? Uh, What are you doing? Put down those gloves. Willie! Moose! I fix him. Oh, Oh, yep. Train Naples a little slow on the draw, Doctor. So long. Stop! Chief! Chief! Honey killed! Just lie right there on that table, Chief. Over you go! Hoppy! Hoppy, you all right? Gully, what happened to them? Ah, uh, they started to give me trouble. Come on, hurry. Let's get out of here. That message in the envelope the hotel clerk give you downstairs, you ain't told me what it's about. It's from Blarney's daughter, Laurel. 
She wants to talk to me. She'll be here at 11 tonight. Laura? Here? Oh, what about, for gosh sakes? Well, it's almost 11 now. Hey, that must be her now. Somehow I doubt it. Truly, that's a fine way to be treating me for the hospitality and the goodness of me heart that I've opened up to you. Ditching me after the fight the way you Blarney, did. Larney, now no, wait a minute. Take it easy. No, Dr. Trump told me all about it. Stealing the red terrorist gloves. Now, just because you had an old grudge against him is no call to go violating the hospitality of your host, Mr. Cassidy. It's no grudge I've got, Blarney. And I didn't steal those gloves. I just borrowed them. Here they are. Take them. Oh, borrowed them, is it? For a little investigation, that's all. Those gloves killed a man tonight. Sure, and I'm as sorry as anyone about that, Cassidy. But why should you think there was foul play? It was an accident, as the town crown himself declared. Was there anything about the gloves you didn't like? A set of brass knuckles, maybe? No, Blarney, nothing like that. No tin foil in the padding, no oil of mustard soaked into the leather. I couldn't find a thing wrong with them. And so you admit you were wrong, that you made a fool of yourself. Well, all I can say is that any man who thinks Blarney Madigan could be running a crooked fight show is no friend of his. Good night and bad sister. Uh, Hoppy, I... Wait. Mm -hmm. Now, come on. Mm. What is it? We've got to head Laurel off if we can. I don't want her to be running into her father on her way over here. Hoppy, Mr. Cassidy. Laurel. I just saw my father leave as I came up. I stepped into the shadows. Tamar could have done just as well, couldn't it? No, no. I just had to talk to you. I couldn't sleep. I kept hoping and praying they'd put the Red Terror in jail for killing that man tonight. But they won't. The fight's going on. The killing's going on. Easy now, honey. Mr. Cassidy, I know it's like asking for a miracle. But is there anything, anything you could possibly think of to, to get Brady out of this? You called me Hoppy once. Let's keep it that way. All right, Hoppy. Does Brady know you've spoken to me? Of course not. If he knew I was trying to stop the fight... Oh, he's such a fool. So cocksure, so confident. He and that trainer of his. Trainer? Yes, Wendy Sykes. Uh, you mean Wendy's training him? Say, Brady's in good hands. Is he? All Sykes cares about is a chance to hurt Dr. Drum in the Red Terror. So we heard. But hasn't Brady announced that he's quitting the fight game after this last fight? Yes, but I want him to quit this horrible business now. Oh, what good is the money if... If it costs him his life, he'll be killed. He hasn't a chance. Not a chance. He hasn't, eh? <laughs> Laura, what do you suspect? Tell me. Suspect? Well, what should I suspect? I'd better go. I'm sorry I bothered you like this. I know it seems silly. No, wait. Well, I guess that accident tonight kind of made her blow her top. California, I never did see that first blow. The one that made Bombo groggy. Did you? Why, sure. Well, it happened when... Well, when... So much was going on at the time, Hoppy. Yeah, exactly. Nobody saw it. You know, California, I think we'd better pay a call on Laurel's father at his office tomorrow morning. Well, what for? Well, for one thing, I want to talk to him some more about that killing tonight. Could be it wasn't an accident. What? No. In fact, some people might even call it murder. <laughs> Now back to Hop Along Cassidy and the Red Terror. After an enormous Indian prize fighter named the Red Terror kills a man in the ring, Hoppy incurs the hostility of Lonnie Madigan, fight promoter, by raiding the Terror's dressing room to examine his gloves. Hoppy, who suspects the Terror's manager, Doc Drum, of foul play, visits Madigan at his office the next morning. Sure, and I'm that sorry myself for what happened last night. Perhaps I spoke a little hasty, eh? Let's shake. Glad to, Blarney. Oh. And now I've been thinking, Hoppy, that you'd fit in mighty well in the next show I'm figuring on putting up. Me? Yes, you, me boy. The star attraction of a grand rodeo. Ha, 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 I see. Afraid not, Blarney. And why not? Well, for one thing, you got too many partners. No, what do you mean by that? Well, for instance... Your partnership with uh, Doc Drum. And what makes you think he's any partner of mine? You're too interested in the success of that fighter of his. Now, would that be a crime? 
You're an honest man, Blarney. Doc Drum is a crook, and you know it. And so he served time once. What of it? Man can make a mistake. He's made a lot more since then. That's why he headed west. You even loaned him money to get into the fight manager business, didn't you? And why not? For which you got a share in the Red Terror, eh? Ah. <laughs> Broken down medicine show faker. Faker, is it? It's a great fighter Doc Drum's made out of him. He'll be ready for John L. Sullivan himself after he gives Brady Adams the beating he deserves two weeks from now. You seem mighty sure you can take care of your future son-in-law. Son-in-law? No common price fighter marries the daughter of Blarney Madigan, I can tell you. Adams is retiring after this next fight, Blarney. He'll have enough to buy a share in a ranch and build a fine house with all those fancy gadgets women like. Even one of those newfangled telephones like you have there on the wall. Oh. Unless, of course, he gets killed before he can collect the purse. Now, Bombo's death was an accident, a chance in a million. Was it? Well, go along, Blarney. Think it over. One, three, please. Hello, Willie. It's Madigan. Now put Dr. Drum on the phone. Yeah, where do you want to go now, Hoppy? To the livery stable to get our horses. I want to ride over to the local newspaper office and read up some of the back issues about the Red Terror's past fights. After that, we're riding over to where Brady Adams is training. Oh? Well, how long do you figure we'll be hanging around here? Well, I... Those two riders coming toward us. Down, California. Boy, those low down... No use drawing now. They went around that corner too fast. Them bullets come so close, they give me a chill. Who was they, anyway? Couldn't tell with those bandanas over there, Faith. Oh, yeah, but... Uh... Did you notice the gun hand of the first one? Some sidewinder who goes in for finger jewelry. Let's have your boy knife, California. Here. Yeah, what for? One of those bullets buried itself in the stable wall. Might make an interesting souvenir. And as to how long we're staying, I can tell you now. We're staying until after Brady Adams fights the Red Terror. Say, hey, it's sure been swell of you, Hoppy, helping Brady train the last couple of weeks. The boy's in great shape. Yeah, I don't think he'll have any trouble taking the big Indian tonight, Wendy. Hey, here comes Laurel. Hi there. Hoppy, California. Hey, Miss Laurel, did you hear that Hoppy's going to be in Brady's corner? Yes, I did, Wendy. But suppose, Hoppy, suppose that big gorilla hits Brady like he hit Bombo Renee. Don't worry, he won't. I hope you're right. Oh, you've got to be right. Oh, shucks. Brady will probably flatten him in the first round. Wendy, where is Brady? Oh, he's out taking a long walk. It's his only exercise before the fight. He'll be back soon, Miss Madigan. Well, I reckon California and I'd better be moseying along. we got a rather important call to make before the fight tonight. you want? Just lead me to your boss, Willie, and I'll tell him. Hey, you want to make double, eh? I know you. You're kind of familiar yourself, come to think of it. Yeah, that heavy black shrubbery over your eyes, those rings on your fingers. Of course. You're the bad boy who shoots holes in stable walls. Get that, that ape! <coughs> Man Renee was killed because of anything shady. Hey, dear Blarney. Well, now, what about that attempt on Cassidy's life a couple of weeks ago? Right after I telephoned you to make sure everything was on the up and up. But, my dear fellow, what possible benefit could I gain from his death? A sense of security, perhaps. <laughs> Cassidy! Yeah, and a lot of satisfaction, too, I'll bet. But your luck's against you, Doctor. I'm still alive. Keep your hands on the table, Doc, unless you think you're bulletproof. So what's the meaning of this, Cassidy? The meaning is clear, Blarney. I have here two checks, both for the same amount. The winner's share of all the purses that your friend's fighter has won. One is made out to you, Dr. Drum. The other, which you will sign, Doctor, is made out to Mr. and Mrs. Brady Adams. Happy gory! Sit down, Blarney, and keep your shirt on. 
We'll deposit these two checks as stakes and a wager that the Red Terror is going to be knocked out tonight. <laughs> and that's what you want me to sign. Well, of course, my dear Cassidy, of course I'll sign. That's all you want? Uh, where's my pen? The check. Yeah. yeah. Shall we let Blarney hold the stakes? I know we can trust uh, him. Now, wait a minute. Take them, Blarney, and hold on to them. That check I signed represents everything California and I have in the world. Well, I don't think it's a risk. <laughs> you don't, eh? I want to talk to you, Blarney. Come on, let's go. Well, Blarney, I heard enough to know that you aren't cahoots with drum. Hey, where did California go? I left him out here waiting. Well, his horse had gone, too. For oh, sure, and that's him riding this way, isn't it? Yeah. Hoppy, Hoppy, uh, I seen him bring him in. And I read out to see what's going on. They got him, Hoppy. Laurel's yeah. taking him to her house. Who, what? Who, who Pull they... up. What are you talking about? What's it's, happened? It's Brady. Brady Adams. He's been shot. Laurel found him. How bad? The doc says he'll live. What dirty rat did it? Who shot Nobody him? Nobody knows yet. He was dry gulched on his way back from his walk. Well, the dog that did it will answer to me. Brady's a fine lad. Aren't you changing your tune all of a sudden? Well, maybe so. But if Laurel loves the boy, it... Ah, oh, a black curse in the whole business. Come on, let's get all over to the house. Wait a minute. Blarney, if I hadn't butted in, if they hadn't been afraid of me finding out what they'd been up to, they wouldn't have had to knock Brady out before he ever got into the ring. Well, no, what... Blarney, you got to put me in against the Red Terror tonight. You? Gee. Make an announcement from the ring tonight. If they want to see a fight, even if it's only Hopalong Cassidy. Only Hopalong? We're <laughs> jumping catfish. It may not be a championship fight, but with you in it, Hoppy. California, we got to get a hold of Windy fast and get organized. Come on, let's go. I hit that big tub, Hoppy. Hit him. Uh, it's the same story. The red tears just standing there, looking at Hoppy between his gloves, not trying to fight. If he'd just open up so Hoppy could find a place to land one, I say, I forgot the towel. That first round was slow motion, Hoppy. How do you feel? Okay, California. Where's Wendy? Sure, and he forgot the towels. I'll go see. Here. Here, Hoppy. Take a drink of water. Steady now. Hey, you let most of that slop on you. Did you get any? All I need. California, listen. Yeah? The wallet is left in that bottle. Keep the cork in it, do you understand? And hold on to it until the fight's over. Well, but Hoppy... Do I... as I say. Don't let that bottle get away from you. If anyone tries to spill or drink it, grab him. Well, I uh, don't get it, but uh, here comes Wendy with the towel. Hey, get that big ox, Hoppy! Kill him! That's it! Open him up, Hoppy! Watch it, Hoppy! Oh, he's letting the engine crowd him. Careful, Hoppy! Don't let that moose buffalo you. Oh, Hoppy, watch it! What's happening? What's going on? I don't know, but Hoppy's staggering. He's hurt. Oh, Hoppy, get away! Get away! Ah, the terror's measuring him. Get away! Hoppy! Hoppy! Now back to Hopalong Cassidy. He's down. The Red Terror's down. A terrific right from nowhere. Hoppy tricked the big moose. He can't get up. It's a knockout. California. California, where are you? Oh, let's help get him out of the ring. Calif Here, Hoppy, I'll give you a hand. Where's California? Hoppy! Hoppy, I got him! I got him! California, where are you? Here, under the ring. He tried to pull a gun on me when I wouldn't let him spill the water from the bottle. Drag him out here, California. Who is it? Uh, come on, you... It's Windy, Hoppy. Windy Sykes. Why, you loud... Man. I thought so. Hoppy, what's going on here? Here's Windy's gun, Blarney. I've got a slug that I think will fit it. And I'll bet the slug that laid out Brady Adams will fit Wendy's gun, too. You see, Blarney, it was Wendy's constant harping on his hatred for Doc Drum that first made me suspicious. Then when I found out at the newspaper office that he'd trained every one of Red Terror's opponents, well... So Wendy and Doc Drum were actually partners. Of course. It was easy for Wendy to dope his fighter's water with knockout drops. But if there was only knockout drops, what killed Bombo Rene? Well, you saw it yourself. The big Indian hit him when Bombo was already half asleep. 
And you can take it from me, Chief Walking Moose can really hit when he has lots of time. I know. Then you think it was the punch that did it? Yeah. Doc Drum would have to hate any man an awful lot to take a chance on poisoning him. Hoppy! Hoppy! California, did you get that chemist report? I sure did. And, and there wasn't any knockout drops in that water in your bottle? No? No, nothing in it at all. Except enough strychnine to kill a horse. <laughs> This means it's so long from Hoppy in California once again. If you'd like more of these two-gun adventures of Hoppy's, don't forget you can see him in the fine Hopalong Cassidy pictures at your local theater. Meanwhile, we're hoping you'll tune in next time Hopalong rides the airwaves to bring you more action out of the Old West. Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. The Red Terror was written by Irvin Ashkenazi. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production.